<laughs> Clearly at a crossroads early in the season um, as far as what uh, what's going the future is going to hold. Is this going to be a postseason a team? Is this going to be a team that uh, gets better throughout the season? Or um, is it going to show its youth? Um, keep in mind that one of the factors with you know playing as well as we did early is a coach has the ability, knowing the young personnel, to put them in the right spots and to get them to go to their strengths and stay away from their weaknesses. And then over a little bit of a period of time, books get written, you get exposed for what you can do. And then the question is, can you then make the adjustments either as a coach or as a player to be able to, in spite of the fact that the scouting report's out there on you, continue to be successful? And that's probably where, where we face ourselves right now. And then, of course, uh, in the league, um, you know, they're just, and we've talked about this before, there just aren't enough bad teams in this league. There aren't. We're no longer a bad team. We used to be. We're not. But we don't play very against many bad teams in the league. And um, I think you could see that in the first two games, and you'll see it again Saturday. Um, you know, Ole Miss is, it leads the league in rebounding. Uh, Burnett sat out last year from Miami and is a uh, can light it up. Uh, Saez is a double-double guy, and he's going to go up against our young inside players, and we're going to have to game plan for him. Uh, they block shots, they rebound, they're physical. They play man, they play 1-3-1. One, one. They run a 2-2-1 two, two, to a drop back 2-3. They press on the under basket out of bounds. They press some on the side. Um, you know, they're, they're a very they're a challenging preparation. Um, and so there's a, lot, there's a lot going on, and so I'm, I'm sure – just like you, um, uh, I'm curious to see how we come out on Saturday because we got our backs up against the wall. How's the you look at the tape and just over the last few games, the defensive effort? How do you get into the kids' heads to play defense first early in the games, and that will lead to maybe the offense? Or what's your approach on it? Great, great, good question. Here's a, here's the issue. The the issue is um, like starting four freshmen. Um, one of the things that that I really believe in is um, you tr I try to reward the guys um, for the consistency of their effort and their energy and their preparation and so on and so forth. Take Austin out of the equation for one second, all right? Um, Jared, Mustafa, and Danjel uh, and Anthony are our four hardest workers. That's not to say that we don't have other players that work hard, but those four, even though they're freshmen, have been the most disciplined um, and the hardest working. Now, I'm not unhappy with our work ethic with any of our players. They've all worked hard and they've all prepared. But those three guys, and Anthony, deserve the reward of the consistency of their, ro their roles. Austin is in a different situation. At the center position, he's competing against Laron, Horace, Anthony. And I don't know that any of those other three players and all of none of them have really separated themselves from the others. You could look at each one and go, well, he does this, but he can't do that. He does that, but he can't do this. And so, um, you know, Austin played, did not play a ton. You know, he's played, what, between 12 and 20 minutes to get him kind of up to speed. Um, I knew have, having him come in this year, I knew he could help us in some areas, but I also knew that this season would go, is going to go a long way towards helping him in his future because he, he now is able to see the speed of the game and, and so on and so forth. Um, Saez will be a, a tough matchup for him. Um, and it's going to be all we could do to prevent a double-double guy and a guy that leads the SEC in rebounding from doing what he does. In some ways, it's a better matchup for him than Cornette because Cornette was a stretch five-man. And although Saiz can go to the perimeter with ball screens and handoffs and can even knock down a shot, he won't be standing out there at the three-point line all game. He'll be down there in the post, and Austin will be better because he'll be a little closer to the basket.
two games where teams really had their way with you offensively and defensive effort was in question. But I don't know it was the defensive effort as much as it was the defensive execution. I, I, I don't think that their effort was, was there anything wrong with their effort. It was just that you know, we had some real fundamental breakdowns in our preparation and then how we executed. Um, and um, and that was that was our problem. And yeah, so w could there be some adjustments to the lineup? Sure. Could there be some adjustments to the the way we play? Yes. After the final exhibition, you had a pretty long chat with them about a lot of it. What happened over two months to where you had to revisit? I'm sure many of the same issues all over. Oh, I tell you what. You know, d obviously the locker room was very disappointed, um, and and how we started, and and uh, you know we spotted them a 19 point lead, lost by 19, and so you know there was, uh, you know. There was just a lot of dialogue of how we can prepare differently and better, how we can start better, uh, where we needed to, uh, you know, focus. And I just think it would be valuing possessions more than anything else um, on both the offensive and the defensive end. Coach, I think I asked this about a month ago, but you sounded the alarm about the rest of it defensively. Right. I mean, are you what you are at this point defensively? I mean, do you, I mean, do you feel like the 17 games left is fixable, or do you feel like can't go get new players. No, 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 no. I, listen, I, I the, the two things that are in play are, one, on the one hand, the scouting report is out. And so having placed our guys in the best positions possible, teams are able to play catch up on us right now in that regard. At the same time, because we are young and we are going through these different experiences, the learning curve is greater. We should improve in a lot of the areas that we are breaking down in. Now, is it going to be enough to win? Is it going to be enough to win the way we want to win? That's the that's to be determined. So, no, I don't think that there's a, a there's a ceiling in any way. Um, and and so, you know, I was, again, I, I said this last night on my radio show. I was talking to Stephen about a month ago, and my son, and I said, you know, buddy, we don't have that dimension where we're great at anything. Like, um, either we've got some great offense that they can't stop, or we have some great drop back defense that can hold its own, or we're a great pressing team, or I know when they got to take the ball out of bounds, we can turn them over. You know, we're good, and uh, in in a lot of areas, but we don't have that 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 killer dimension to to sort of go to. Um, and that would be, uh, you know, my first year. At the end of the year, we were really a good lockdown defensive team because we had older players, and it was the only way we could survive. And then we had KT, and then there were times in, in moments of, you know, close games, Kareem could take a game over because he is a great player and he could do some certain things. And and I think that we've got to find that dimension where we, you know, can ho can hang our hat. Uh, we spend a lot of time in the dropback defense, and it's got to be an area that we, because of as much time we spend there, we got to get better at. Well, you've got a lot of those players who can't just score shooting high or keep the ball moving through the game. Whatever. I think ball movement uh, was a factor. You know, we played against the zone, and that should provide when we, you know, we played against other zones, and that provides for inside out and more ball movement and guys making plays out of space. Uh, you have to do that against Ole Miss because of the way they change defenses. So. I'm assuming I, I would anticipate that we would have a better assist turnover ratio. Be, and we'll turn it over a little bit more against Ole Miss than we will Vanderbilt, and that's one of the things that Ole Miss does really well. They create a lot of offense from their defense. Um, but I do think we'll, we'll pass it better and, um, and, and score better out of space. these types of breakdowns like in the second half against Georgia and then the first half against Vanderbilt, you can't just chew the butt. Like and that's not gonna work. Well it's, well, it's not about it's it, it's not about a butt chewing. Um, let's just say let's say it's about Frazier and Maiden who are two first team all conference players just flat out taking over a game right. that we played really well in for about eighty percent of that basketball game to right. to have that lead. Or um, you know going out there against Vanderbilt, you know, with the exception of the one young point guard they have those kids are all juniors. They've been there. I, I remember those kids when they were young as freshmen. And they were on some talented Vanderbilt teams, but they weren't starting or they weren't, you know, the chance was. But, I mean, and so, 
Um, you know, we're going to play. We're going to play against Ole Miss tomorrow. We're going to have juniors and seniors at every position. You know, guys that have been out there, been there and done that. And our kids are our our kids are talented enough to be able to compete and be out there, but just lack for you know any experience. And you could see that with the way we started the game, and you could see that the way we uh, the end, started the game against Vanderbilt and the way we ended the game against Georgia. Can you see McLemore as a former starting lineup tomorrow? No, um, um, Mac would be to and then replacing Dangel, mm -hmm. no chance. Dangel actually played pretty good defense. I, I I don't know, I don't know where that. No, Dangel plays play pretty good defense. Dangel um, um, struggled some against Mayton, um, but who doesn't? In other words, like if you don't mind, Roberson was Dangel's matchup. I don't think he had a field goal. You know what I mean? I just I think I think Dangel's definitely not the not not the defensive weak. It's more of a it's more of a team. More of a team thing. We're not in the right spots as often as we need to be. So it wouldn't be anyone, definitely not Dan Jell as, as an individual. Okay, good. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. Charlie, there's standing room only tickets available. Three games. Get them on the website or at 